Hello, my name is Vis and this is Whitney Academy News. Today we are joined with Miss Yurata, Emmy and Hanako from Kumakita School in Hiroshima, Japan. So, what did you enjoy about your first week at Whitney Academy? I really enjoyed the different lessons we had. It was very fresh and very fun. And what do you think about your new friends here? I like them very much. They're very sweet, very loving, and oh. super, super friendly. <laughs> what did you learn about, about the lessons in Whitley? And what's the similarities between your school and our school? Well, first of all, I learned many different words that usually is only used here in England, like fizzy drinks, <laughs> to, to when they mean soft drinks. And then I also learned that French fries, they call them chips. Yeah, they're chips. <laughs> it was very new for me and it was funny actually learning. One of the similarities from our school is that it's actually very it's stricter than what I expected this school to be. And then the difference is, is that between every subject in Japan, we have a five minute break, which here they don't have. Another difference is that each in Japan, each student has their own desk. And that was also very different because here some of us have joint desks. And yeah, it was, there are, of course, similarities and differences, but the school in general is very nice. Hi, Amy. So I've been told that you've been working with a Spanish teacher in a few lessons. So what was that about? Well, I had the opportunity to work with a teacher for one Spanish class and I was really surprised because I wasn't expecting that they would be able to understand my Spanish because my mom is Mexican and my dad is Japanese, making me half Mexican. And since I was small, we've always been speaking in Spanish, so I'm practically a native speaker. So at the end of the class, for five minutes, when she made me talk and introduce myself in Spanish, I was very surprised because they were able to translate to English each line I was saying. And honestly, I used some pretty difficult words just to make it like, just do a little hard time for them because the teacher asked me to. But I was really surprised, honestly. I never expected that they were at such levels. Thank you. And Ben and Horace, what did you think about them coming? Uh, uh, oh, I, I honestly didn't know that they were going to come. And when I met them, I was like, I just want to make a good impression of myself. And I ended up being coming friends with them. And they're so nice. <laughs> they're so nice. <laughs> Uh, when I first met them, I had to Google Translate a lot of stuff because I couldn't talk Japanese, <laughs> and that was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Alicia, and here with me today is Isabel, Sophie, and Faith from the Matilda production. I myself was in Matilda. Very enjoyable. And as it was at the start of year seven, we got to make lots of new friends. What did you learn from the Matilda production? I learned how to act and how to be more confident. Yeah, and how to speak louder and it's like use great facial expressions. And um, I learned how to like be better around people and not to be nervous. How did you feel? Um, we were really nervous before the first performance, but after that, it just felt normal. Yeah, I was very proud of us all because we'd all been so nervous before the show and we did it really good. Hi, my name is Gosha. To my left is Kira and to my right is Carter. The topic we will be talking about is school starting at 10am, not 9am. 85% of teenagers complain about feeling drowsy or sleepy in the day. On Tuesday, the 26th of February, 2019, the petition government received 185,000 signatures demanding schools open at 10 a.m. These are some of the opinions of parents. Hello, these are the results we have found from adults. A mother with two primary age children has said, I think it's ridiculous. Work doesn't let you start at 10 a.m. just because you're tired, because you stayed up late. 
Also, among the primary and secondary children said, I think no, because they will just stay up later and they will still be tired. Plus, we went to school early, so they should. Hello, these are the roots of what we found teenagers think. A year eight student claimed, no, because the day gets darker earlier in winter and letting them go later isn't preparing them for work when they're older. A year seven student said, this shouldn't happen because it is the student's fault that they are tired. Changing the timetable is going to make it more dangerous for walking home at a darker time. And anything can happen. Hi, my name is Anisha and here with me today is C on my right and Vidas on my left. Together we are here to tell you about the visit to our school from Bruce Daisley, a very successful businessman and the vice president of the well-known social networking society, Twitter. This amazing man had many ups and downs on the road trip to success, but still is the man he is today. A few months ago, Bruce had a trip to our school to share his stories and give a few lifetime advice to our students who are dealing with the stress of the upcoming exams. Now we will be asking Vidasa, who was there and looking at Bruce Daisley's speech. So Vidasa, what did you think about his childhood and his background? I thought that um, he lived in a council estate when he was a child and he actually didn't get any support from his family. Like his dad was a bit too drunk one day and then he got a painting from the museum and tried to sell it on a bus. So from that background, kind of background, we can't imagine a man like him being a vice president of a big social network called Twitter. And yeah, it's just beyond imaginable. Like. And did you, well, enjoy the speech? Yeah, I personally, I actually got some tips for myself as well. Like sometimes I get a bit frustrated and I get a bit angry or sad and then I don't want to come to school anymore. But then how, to overcome them, the best man to know is from Bruce Daisley. So I actually like this uh, speech quite nicely. 